Thank you all. Thanks for taking the time to, to come out uh, this evening and again come to another workshop hosted by Digital Camera and, and the Camera Business Council. I think it's a good kick off to all, all of us actually, you know, learning more about how we can use um, technology to our full potential um, and even, you know, whether it's improving our business or whether it's further engaging um, with, with people in the community or our clients. Um, I think it's great to sort of, you know, have these kind of workshop discussions where we can all sort of nut it out together. So I'm just going to quickly talk about, I guess, um, just a bit of a broad sort of snapshot, I guess, of social media um, in terms of sort of where it's come from and a little bit where it's sort of going. And I guess, I guess some sort of key points in terms of um, things to consider when you're, whether you're, you're looking at your sort of social media strategy or you're looking to sort of dip your feet in for the sort of first time. So I guess um, as Roger sort of pointed out, especially Canberra, we love social. The world has loved social. Um, funny enough, I think in my last presentation we are talking about what's happened in the last 10 years in terms of digital insights. And if we look at sort of 2003, it was really sort of really low adoption. That's when sort of Facebook and all that was really starting to come out in the market. And now if you look at, I think Facebook just posted on its, um, probably about two days ago, I think its revenues are now at like 2.9 billion for the last quarter, I think something like that. So huge adoption of social media. Um, we, we now use it, you know, whether it's for our own personal lives, whether it's for business, we're, we're a very connected society. Um, we're on our phones, we're on our mobile devices, computers, it's pretty much everywhere. You can't escape it. Everyone's always hiding their phone underneath the boardroom tables when they're checking out their Facebook. So that's just one of it. As you can see, over, over the last 10 years, we've, uh, I'll go to the next, next slide actually. Um, quite a lot of different social media networks have sort of sprouted up, um, all with their particular interest groups. Um, but again, there's obviously the, the main few. Obviously, you know, you've got your Facebook, your Twitter, sort of Instagram and, and Pinterest and all those different things, all serving different purposes um, to their target audiences as well as um, different ways of, you know, sharing the type of content. So keyword there is content. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the main things that I'll really want to sort of touch on is one of the things with social and I think in the early days is a lot of people went out there and it was all about trying to get as many likes and all that sort of stuff. And I think now in the social, social world, it's actually moved beyond that. It's actually about what is relevant uh, to the, the end user that's following you potentially or whether the, you know, they are you know, looking at your page or following your Instagram feed and stuff like that what are they likely to, to look at, want to learn about, and, and give them reason why they want to engage and interact with you. It's, it's one thing to have a million and one likes on your sort of Facebook page. It's another one to, to actually have people that you know, really want to engage with you. So I think that's probably the biggest thing you know, when you look at social is the quality of, of I guess, the connections you make with, um, with your clientele or your audience and so forth. So again, just sort of quickly a snapshot on this sort of graph is just looking and considering the different social media platforms and, and how people actually use them and what purpose they sort of serve in the sort of social ecosystem. Um, again, user engagement. So going back to the content. Um, social is now that platform that it helps us. You know, we're all running short on time. We're Look, for very various reasons, it's easy to stay connected. We're much more um, transient. We're traveling more and all of that. So again, keeping engaged is, is what social has really you know, picked up that gap in the market. So again, investing the time in creating quality content is really key, especially moving forward. A lot of the changes that are happening in terms of um, and what we've sort of seen over the last, you know, last year as well, you know, the changes in how Facebook, for example, what it actually dis displays on people's news feeds, all is starting to come back to content. Um, Google is, is going to do the same thing moving forward where it's going to eventually sort of change keyword, meta keywords. So it's actually going to be about the content that's on your website. How relevant is it? How engaging is it? How many times are people viewing it and using it? So. It's really important when you, when you consider, okay, I'm, I'm about to approach social um, or you're already in social, what, what are you sending out? How, what is 
um, your your audience response to that? Are they sharing it and all that sort of stuff? So it's it's really important to not to ignore those sort of um, you know I guess analytics and feedback that you're getting, and really consider that if you want something to be shared and liked, make it easy for people to do that as well. Um, and, and if you're telling a story, you know, support it, support it with something that you might have on the website and actually make it a complete journey so you know, people can actually find out more information or again, you know, if it's about them sharing content or it's about them getting back to you, and I'll give you an example from my previous work at IronNet, um, make sure it's sort of timely as well. And that's probably another big key is actually being um, prompt with social as well. And, and considering part of your sort of social media strategy is how you're actually going to, to manage and then also you know, facilitate and allocate budget towards actually thinking about the content. So example, I guess one of the ones where, and I can sort of personally talk about sort of the INEX experience because I was obviously running the sort of team back back a little while ago. And this is still something in terms of how we sort of approach social um, for them. And one of the big things was, you know, even we all have our own limitations, even whether it's a marketing team, whether it's, um, you know, you're the only person in your business and you've got to do a million and one things, so how do you get the time? For INET, it was about, um, while we had the marketing team, it was also about, you know, we have other resources, whether it's your other staff who are really passionate about your business and helping in your brand and so forth, um, to get them on board. Um, so we sort of sort of set up a range of different account managers, for example, who all had um, permissions just to basically answer and have a conversation with, with our clients and customers. So again, here's, here's a classic example of how we sort of used it. So we used it for if something was going wrong um, in the area, we quickly told people about that. If there was a problem, a lot of the times, you know, our social nearly became more about helping people uh, in terms of troubleshooting, any different uh, issues they were having. And we actually had call centre staff um, quickly respond, help them out. And so it really became this, this great dialogue on terms of our, our Facebook page and stuff like that. The advantage of what that was, of, of all of that conversation happening on Facebook was that our other clients could go on there and actually see the type of experience and service that we were actually getting. As a company, we, we were really sort of pushing forward to connect with our customers and, and help them out, whether it's, you know, from a phone call through to, yeah, it's now more convenient for me to just quickly Facebook a message. So that's an example. The other example is from the business side and how they try, they sort of still use and continue using it is obviously trying to find different articles to actually help um, their businesses understand, in this circumstance, social, social media engaging with customers as well by posting some videos and some experience that their own business customers um, have, have found and so forth. So again, it, it, all this really comes back to um, taking a step back and thinking about how your, what, what type of content and information your clients or, um, or your audience wants to hear from you and then actually structuring it, uh, your own teams and your own resources in a way that you can really support and deliver that. Um, and I think the, the biggest part in terms of you know, understanding that is really considering the analytic side behind it. Um, and I guess that's probably, and, and the tools that you've got to sort of help you support to manage all of this. So again, I've probably jumped a bit here, but again, one of the things is learning and testing. So if I go on to helping you learning and testing, the different tools you can use, things like Hootsuite, for example. So that's obviously a social media aggregator and management platform. So you can obviously have all your different social networks in one dashboard. It allows you to sort of schedule um, posts or tweets um, and, and push them out, but also get the analytics that comes behind that. So what content is actually getting shared, um, when, and all that sort of stuff. There's things like even on your website, um, you know, Bringing, bringing your social back to your website through an aggregator like Stackler, for example. There's various other ones just um, that you can sort of use, but it's about bringing all of it into a central place for then even people to easily digest. Um, Sprout Social is another great one um, in terms of, I think both the Hootsuite ones offer obviously sort of free packages as well. Um, if you're looking back on your website, I think there's also Add This, um, is another sort of social sharing platform, which actually, again, is really good for your own content on your website to sort of understand, okay, 
what content is being shared and, and what's actually, um, you know, people are finding useful, which is going to be really important, especially as Google changes its mechanisms, but as, you know, people are actually demanding more from the sort of website in terms of the quality of the content that's on there. So these are some of the tools, um, heaps of them out there that you can use in, in your own teams that are easily sort of set up that can actually sort of, you know, minimize that time. But the biggest thing is they're giving you the analytics to learn and understand what content's working, what's not working. Um, and to have a bit, of a, a bit of a stab, there's no, I don't, I think that there's no right or wrong I think in terms of with some social, there's something I guess you should stay clear of, but in most parts, especially for small business, it's about having a go. I think it's, it's really about making sure you invest the energy into it. Uh, I think there's nothing worse with, with social is to just have a Facebook page just for the hell of it. Um, a lot of people then also do, well, let's just create accounts on every single sort of network, but why? What's the reason behind that? You know, if, if, you're, if you're, and how are you actually going to say, and how are you actually going to use those different mediums? Because as I showed you in that previous wheel, different social media networks have different interests, you know? So for example, um, if you're on, say for example, you're in the film industry and you, you're, you know that your um, audience or your followers are really heavily on Twitter, well, that's going to be the medium that you're really going to invest your energy on supporting for your, for your industry. You're not going to be investing heavily in all the other ones if you're not getting that same engagement. Vice versa, you might find that Twitter is serving your business community really well and then sort of, you know, on the other flip side of the scale, you know, your, your general business engagement stuff is happening really well on Facebook. So that's just some examples of taking a step back and thinking about the mediums and how you're going to really support that and giving it the time. Um, again, this is just an example of some of the analytics that you would get. This is just a, a snapshot of uh, Sprout Social's dashboard at a point in time. Um, so again, th this is really interesting in terms of obviously, you know, giving you some more demographic and audience information. So then it, it helps you understand, okay, the type of people that are, are listening and sharing and, and viewing your content. So how can you create it and adjust it to, to suit them even, even further? Um, I guess in summary, just not to take up too much more time. Um, yeah, I guess social media provides a wealth of, of targeting and different knowledge about your, your consumer base, which not only can help you optimize your social, but think of it as how do you optimize the rest of your advertising and marketing, your website, and how does it all work together? And that's the key. It doesn't work at the silo. All of these things come together. Um, so I guess use, use your social analytics to really drive um, your messaging and so forth. Um, I think probably the other one is, is really about investing in creating quality content um, for your clients. I think that's, that's, that's the key there. Um, not everything is just shareable just because you, you write a couple of lines. Just really take the time. If it's, whether it's a, a time investment to really write about and think about what is really valuable for the people that are about to read this or you know, working with an agency or um, a content firm. To, to really help you, give you some guidance in that and structuring how you can, I guess, use your resources in your team and use the tools that are available out there. Um, and my final note is don't, don't be afraid to test it and change it. Um, with anything in these plans, you've got to keep it quite nimble, review it, learn, keep evolving and, and adapting, start from a base. So, a bit of a snapshot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.